Stephen, eating normally after having an accident, having lost a lot of your bowel after surgery, is this possible? What do you have to eat more frequently? Or because you have lost a lot of surface of your gut. Yes, well, I mean, this is a very important uh, question because um, uh, what happens when you lose a lot of your small bowel, um, you obviously malabsorb, and so therefore you get very high stomal outputs, and so therefore people get concerned that there's, you know, three, four liters of fluid coming out of the stoma, and if you don't eat at all, then the stomal output decreases, and sometimes people are happy. But that is actually the wrong approach because uh, you need food in the remaining small bowel to let it adapt. And the capacity of, for the bowel to adapt is enormous. And it starts immediately after the loss of bowel and can continue to at least two years afterwards. And without food, you won't get that adaptation process. So we encourage patients to continue to eat. Can enteral nutrition help if you take supplements, for example? And if yes, do you have to take high energy density supplements, or is there a risk? The, uh, really, it depends upon the patient themselves. So if you have somebody who can't eat normal food or eats insufficient, then we would use nutritional supplements. Um, the other time that we would use um, liquid formula diets, for instance, would be where the, one of the principles of managing somebody who's lost all their bowel and they've only got a small amount remaining is to make that remaining bowel work as much as possible. So we would put in a feeding tube and we would give, in addition to the IV f fluids as well, we would give a, an infusion into the small intestine overnight. So therefore, you know, the absorption's carrying on overnight as well. We are not going into drugs too much, but can drugs really um, provide some relief, support? Definitely. Um, the, one of the other principles of management of patients with severe short bowel is to try and keep the food or the digested food in contact with the mucosal surface for as long as possible because uh, there's nothing wrong with your digestion of food. In fact, you produce more digestive enzymes than usual as part of the adaptation process. Um, but you've got this digested fluid there and it usually shoots straight out because you don't have a long length of bowel. And uh, so the principle is to try and keep it in as long as possible. And so we use anti-motility drugs and things that prevent things going through. A provocative question. Are too many patients on total parental nutrition? Um, yes. Because it's expensive. Yes. Um, there's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, that a lot of patients um, have major surgery. They initially need TPN. And uh, they're not managed very well afterwards. And it's assumed that their bowel remains the same and they eventually go home on home TPN uh, without having reassessed their need for TPN. And so uh, that's why it's important to have a special team who knows, who has specialized knowledge on how to look after this group of patients and continually reassesses, reassess their need for home TPN. My final question, you're from Pittsburgh, which is a transplantation center. So. In some cases, small bowel transplantation might be necessary. But how many centers are there in the US? You have probably many. How about Asia? How about Europe? Uh, can you find out uh, uh, which is the right transplantation center? How many transplantation centers must be done a year that you can rely on it? Um. That again is the, is the critical question because the, this is a very complex surgery, small bowel transplantation. And you know, just like looking after home TPN patients, you need a dedicated team. 
And so you need somebody not only with specialized knowledge of nutritional gut function problems, but an absolute expert in vascular surgery and an idea of immunosuppression. And, you know, tying all these things together doesn't happen overnight. And so there tend to be few centers. And even in the USA, there's probably only about six centers that are, that, that are active in small bowel transplantation at the moment. And that's probably the reason why transplantation is not used as much as it is, as it, as it should be. Mm -hmm. um, because we know that that patients, that there's a group of patients on home TPN who eventually develop what's called um, TPN failure, and they will die unless they get a transplantation. Okay. And uh, in Europe, it's, it's the same, same thing. There are dedicated centers, um, like in England and Birmingham, and uh, I don't know the centers as well uh, in Europe, but certainly France and Goulet's um, center, uh, who do wonderful work. Yeah. But they are, and, and you will find that around those centers, there's a higher rate of transplantation for, for these problems. In the Asia? And Asia, I, 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 I th think that they have been doing some in Japan, and, but I honestly don't know what the latest situation is. Okay, so it's still, for many people in the world, experimental therapy. Unfortunately, I think it, it is that way. And, uh, you know, going back to your original question, how many transplants do you need to do a year to keep in, 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 in training? And uh, they had that restriction in the USA that you had to do at least six transplants a year to be recognized as a center. Um, so the more, the better it is. I mean, in Pittsburgh, at one stage, we were up to um, 50 to 60 transplants a year. Okay. And clearly, if you get to that level, you get better. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.